Jasmine. Hey, Maria. We better start the show before Mr. Alonzo notices we're in the studio. It's almost spring break, which means it's time to look back on the on some of the greatness that's been happening here in the jungle. Some of the genius hair accolades had a real adventure, traveling to seven schools across Florida and Georgia. <laughs> it's all part of Miss Raff's spring college tour. Earlier this month, 50 Coral Glades juniors set out on an adventure across Florida and Georgia to visit seven schools in three days. The Mad Dash is organized by our Energetic Brace advisor, Ms. Raff, who started the trip by giving her own tour of Florida Gulf Coast University near Fort Myers. What they offer is amazing. Um, I'm not selling you to school because, like I said, I don't get an admission for telling you to come to the school. I'm just sharing with you what the knowledge that I know about the school. After a quick shot up 75, the group pulled into Tampa. Welcome to the University of South Florida. There, former Coral Glades Jaguar Brandon Elrod showed the students around campus, and they got to eat in the college dining hall. The bus then headed to Valdosta, Georgia, where the students woke up the next morning to tour Valdosta State University, a school that offers in-state rates to Florida students, and also some amenities Florida students may enjoy. Students to come out here, not, not right now because it's too cold, but they set up their hammocks, and they like to do homework, um, watch movies. I come out here with my team and we'll play Ultimate Frisbee, so it's a nice place to just come and relax. On the second day of the tour, the longest day, the group next drove down to Tallahassee to hit two big schools, FAMU and FSU. FAMU is one of the largest historically black universities in the country. To us by Time Magazine and Princeton Review for being the College of the Year for 1997-1998. It never goes out, rain, snow, sweet, shine, hail, all of that. It never goes out. The students on campus have many ways of showing their school pride. Right. The students wrapped up their visit to FAMU by participating in the tradition, two claps and a strike chant. Let me get two claps and a strike. Oh. <laughs> After a 10 minute drive, the students started their tour of FSU at the famous Doak Campbell Stadium and then trekked across campus to wrap up the evening at Westcott Fountain. The next morning had the students waking up in Gator Country. Their visit to UF began with a walking tour led by two UF seniors. A tour that of course ended with a group photo in the swamp. Then it was on to the last stop of our tour, the University of Central Florida. And a few final thoughts about the tour. Um, I like the energy. I'm gonna find it. Real good energy. I like the programs of psychology. Of course, it's really, like, program is really nice. This, and between this one and U.S. Um, it was a good tour. I liked it. Very informational. After conquering the college tour for spring 2023, it's time to prepare for the fall tour for seniors coming up in October this year. For Jaguar News, I am Luciano Alzate. I'll bet a lot of students will be asking Ms. Raff for seats on the next college tour bus. While the juniors were visiting the lands of Seminoles and Gators, here in the jungle, we have found a new way to celebrate our mascot. If you've recently been on Coral Glades campus, then you've probably run into this new addition to the Jaguar family. After 19 years, we finally have a statue to represent the Jaguar spirit. Here are some words from Dr. Kaplan going into detail about the backstory behind this statue. In 2020, uh, we know we were quarantined. We had our graduating class of 2020. They had raised over the years quite a bit of money for their own class to be able to do prom and grab bash and all the things that, you know, the end of the year activities that seniors have. And unfortunately, they didn't get to do it. So I met with them virtually and we decided that the money that they had raised over those years would go back to the school somehow. Uh, they gave some money to the freshman class and then the rest of it was earmarked for a statue to be put in the school. Now he'll be talking about the construction process of the statue. And once we were able to find someone who made uh, statues because it was very difficult to find, and then we had to get a company to come out here and actually do the work uh, and get permits and all of that to make it work, um, it took a couple of years for us to do that. So finally, that all ended you know, last month when we were able to get the project complete. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the statue behind him. It looks wonderful. looks great. And what do you think the statue should be named? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. The statue doesn't have a name, so if the students want to name him something, it's fine with me. But right now, he's, he's nameless. He's just a jaguar. Students are now going to provide their feedback as to what the jaguar should be named. Where statue should be named? I think the statue should be named Rocky the Jag. The jaguar should be named Rocky. 
Just from those thoughts alone, the first thing I can think of is Bronx and the Jaguar. It should be called Mike. Jaguar Rock. Turns out the name Rocky is in the lead. Although we heard other great choices, Rocky is currently in first place. If you could give the Jaguar a name, what would you pick? You know, our Coral Guys basketball team recently showed a lot of Jaguar pride, achieving glory on the hard court. For the first time ever, they were named district champs. In the past, Coral Glades High School has not had the best experience with basketball, but this year, under a new coach, Coach Winningham, they went on to win the district championship. Today, we talked to a player on the basketball team. My name is Constantine Pierre. I'm a 10th grade. We wanted to know how it felt to be on the team that led Coral Glades to its first district championships for basketball ever. You know, it feels great, you know. I'm really grateful for Coach Him. He's one of the you know, one of the best coaches who ever coached me. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for him. We asked him how this affects the team going into the it next year. It affects us in a way where we could be really, really motivated next year to go and get another one so that we could get, like, win other districts. And this, this was the shot that made us district champions. New statues and hoops aren't the only way Coral Glade students are showing school spirit. Our boys lacrosse team is showing plenty of spirit on the field. Timothy Brucker, senior at Coral Glades High School and captain of the lacrosse team, is expected to have an amazing upcoming season by uplifting his team and using his skills to win games. Timothy Brucker, I uh, play for Coral Glades Lacrosse. My name is Coach Kyle O'Neill. I'm a teacher in the Social Studies Department here at Coral Glades High School, and I'm also the head boys and girls varsity lacrosse coach. I'm very excited. Um, hard work pays off. Defense wins championships. Um, we want to go a lot farther than we went last year with both teams, and we did go pretty far. Love Tim. Tim's a great lacrosse player. This is his fourth year. Um, I want him to have a really great senior season, and um, uh, me and the guys and the other coaches are going to help him get there. The players on the Corgley's lacrosse team are also very excited for this upcoming season. Uh, my name is Brady Champagne. I play lacrosse. Um, I hope we do very well and win some games. Well, Tim is our captain. He's going to lead us to winning some, some wonderful games. He does a great job um, bringing us the water and making sure it's cold. Um, yeah, he just gets us all together. We're a team. We bond. It's a brotherhood. The physical education department also believes that it takes a different type of athlete to play the sport lacrosse. Uh, my name is Coach M from the PE department. I think lacrosse is a great game that um, involves a variety of different skills. And for kids that might like soccer, basketball, or football, it blends all those skills into one and it makes for a really competitive sport. The sports field isn't the only way you can find Jaguar Spirit. There's a whole club here that will stop at nothing to save what's left of our planet. Recently, a new club has sprouted and is trying to spread its roots around the school. This club's name is Save What's Left. It aims to inspire its members to preserve the natural environment and teach others to do their part, adding effort into their daily lives to care for our one and only of Earth. While joining this club, I understand the effects that litter and um, other environments, things like that, have on the planet. And it's really important. We live on Earth, so we have to keep it clean. Save What's Left does a variety of projects, not only including hands-on activities, but projects that encourage students to join and raise awareness. We've done beach cleanups, garden cleanups, and we've also cleaned up the trash around campus. And they plan to progress more into the future with their club. Um, we're planning to do the Envirothon next year, which is like trivia for the environment. These events help its members to raise awareness and in the true meaning of Save What's Left. 
think I definitely influence me and others. I try to influence others. Me and my friends, if we go, we stay clean, make sure people write litter and all those type of things. We can have an like, inside joke. That's not very safe. We have to do. So we make sure we're clean everywhere. everywhere. Ms. Marcus, the sponsor along with the many members, have encouraged not only a cleaner campus, but overall a healthier world through events and social media. The club's objective is mainly to raise awareness about environmental issues, whether that be on campus or off campus. Right now, the, club, the club's objective is to focus on the environmental friendliness of the school campus. We hope you could share the same goals to make not just this campus a cleaner place, but overall the world cleaner. When it comes to saving the planet, there's really, there really is no stopping Kurgali students, and the generosity doesn't stop there. Take a look at what some of our classmates did recently to bring hope into people's lives. Grace, Jolina, and Tina. The dynamic trio here at Coral Glades that came together to make a difference in their community. My name is Jolina Tabit, and me and my two partners have a project called House of Hope. It's basically working around raising awareness on homelessness and just letting the community know what medical aspects of homelessness are so important and how they affect the homelessness community. Jolina came to the other two with the idea, and from there, the House of Hope was born. We first have some volunteering efforts. We've been volunteering with Broward Partnership, as well as the Shabbat Jewish Center in the community, to just make sure to package food, um, deliver it to homes that need it. We were researching local areas where we could really have an impact on the local community within people that have lower incomes and we found the Shabbat and we found out that the Shabbat most Wednesdays of every month hosts local food drives so um, we sent some emails to the rabbis and we we were able to locate the supervisor and we were able to gain permission to start uh, to be able to go volunteer. Uh, we have our pins they're being sold for three dollars and then you could pay more than $3 as an extra donation. They are being sold out of Miss Mate's room, which is room 227. If you Go ever ahead. wanna find out any more information or wanna stay updated with any volunteer work that we're doing, you can follow our Instagram, which yes. is House of Hope. And there we'll be posting a bunch of updates on where we're gonna be at, what you can do. Alongside selling pins, they're also accepting donations from pillows to bath towels, sweaters, and more. All of these donations are announced on their Instagram. The project is part of their HOSA chapter, sponsored by Ms. Made. Well, there's HOSA competition that's coming up, but the um, homelessness project that we have with Jolina and her crew, that's the only um, big, big like um, chapter project that we have going on right now. These HOSA projects open up students to new ideas and opportunities. Well, I think that the chapter project brings awareness to specific um, organizations or specific health concerns, in this case homelessness, uh, that some kids might not be aware of, that it's a huge issue, not only in our country, but within our own city. This is a viewpoint also held by the students. Through their service work, they've learned more about their communities and had their fun along the way. It feels really good helping out the community and being able to bring light on something that so many people just don't acknowledge and it's just such a problem that is not recognized at all and then most healthcare workers barely even recognize it. We saw that there was a lot of influence in the homeless community. Many people could not get the resources that they needed, they didn't have enough medical care and that led to an increase in all the HIV cases as well as just bad health in that community and we just wanted to shed some light with that and see like preventative measures that you could do to stop those aspects. Overall, this dynamic trio has made an impact on their community and educated those around them. You know, one of the things that is so fun about working here at JAG News is when we dig up little pieces of the past like this. Mm -hmm. Who knew Mr. Alonzo had such moves? <laughs> here at WJAG, when we're preparing the recap, we like to take things seriously. Max, Jeremy, Corinne, get back to work. Oh, get closer. <laughs> yeah, I think Mr. Alonzo should, should just stick to teaching TV production. Luckily, our grandmas found some great students who have much better moves than Mr. Alonzo.
So who am I here with? Darian. Darian, what's your favorite TikTok dance out, that's out right now? Uh, I don't know the dance, but I could show you. You can? Yeah. All right, let's get to it. We went around Core Glades asking the students which TikToks is the best to see which one is the most popular. It's magic, girl. So who am I here with? Janessa. Nessa, what's your favorite dance on TikTok right now? This new one, but like I don't know the name, like the name of it. You can show us how to do it. Yeah. All right. So who am I here with? Uh, Juice. Juice, what's your favorite dance on TikTok right now? Uh, that head dance, that, that going viral, bro. Oh, you can show me how to do it? Yeah. I bet. So who am I here with? Sydney Linsky. Uh, Sydney, what's your favorite uh, dance on TikTok right now? Um, I don't know, but I can show you. I bet. select few TikToks for the students to choose from, everybody seemed to have their own personal favorite, which shows that TikTok is a very diverse platform and you can't really decide which one is the most popular. You know, probably one of the questions we get most often here at Jack News is, wait, we have a TV program here at Coral Glades? Yes, we do. That's where the morning announcements come from every morning. Here's a closer look at what, uh, how we do what we do. Have you ever watched a movie and thought, I could do better? Or have you ever had an idea that you wanted to put on screen? Then TV production class and club are perfect for you. In room 167, Mr. Alonzo teaches and sponsors TV production. The students work on producing various types of what would be on television content. So we start with the easiest thing, which is a music video. Um, they love doing that. Um, so we learn the basics of shooting and editing and then we apply them to a music video where the soundtrack is already provided for them because they have a song. Then we go into actual, actually telling our own original stories and we start with non-fiction storytelling. So I have the students look at something that actually has happened or is happening and then have, teach them how to shoot video of that thing and tell a visual story about it. So this is basically what you see on the evening news. Um, they're called packages. Uh, and then once we get storytelling down, then we go into telling our own original stories that are fictional. So that's what you would call short films. Um, that's the best progression, I think, because even though a lot of students think they want to start with a short film, they don't realize that films are very difficult to make. Um, and they usually run out of ideas. So they'll have an idea that lasts for about 30 seconds or a minute, and you really need to have a short film that's more like three or four or five minutes. Um, so it's better to do, go this way and have them do a story about something that has happened so they already have the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then once they get comfortable with that and they get comfortable with writing um, and you know, structuring a story, then we move into you know, telling their own original stories. Every Tuesday, Mr. Alonzo holds a TV club meeting in his room after school. They often take part in state and county-wide competitions. Um, I'm Luciano Ozate. I'm the vice president of TV production. Um, it's a fun club. We get to, you know, film whatever we like, whether that be short films, uh, stories, uh, you know, news packages. Um, and we get to do it with people that think similarly to us. So we get to... Um, you know, group up, you know, my good friend Maddie, she's the president, my good friend Ronan. Um, we get to just kind of have fun and goof off and, and then at the end of the day, show off our work to everyone else in the club. And, you know, maybe we can submit it to competitions and if we're good enough, we win. Um, and yeah, it's a great club. It's a lot of fun. Um, I recommend anyone who wants to, to come. It's a lot of fun. Right now, we're where we film the morning announcements. So this is the little microphone that we use. Um, and yeah, this is where we film the announcements. I am on the announcements quite often. I do them sometimes. Um, how it works is that he has a couple people that he knows are good at the announcements. And so sometimes he picks us and then he also wants new students trying it. Um, and so that's for the class. In the class he has students trying it. Um, and 
towards the end of the year, he just kind of sticks with the people that he knows does it well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why you see me often because I've been, I've been on the announcement since I was a freshman. I'm a junior now. Um, this little microphone and I just turned it on. I go, good morning, Jaguars. Today's blah, blah, blah. And these are your morning announcements and it's awesome. TV production allows kids to be creative and let their imagination run wild when making films. Coral Glaze is one of the newest high schools in Broward County. It was founded in 2004. It hasn't been around for a long time, but today we're going to go back in time and go through the school's YouTube channel and see how much things have changed. American television was interrupted with an announcement from the president. After a decade of searching, we found and killed Osama bin Laden. The school first joined the YouTube platform on August 23rd, 2010, but uploaded their first video on August 30th of the same year. The video is called Recap 22, 2009-2010, Coral Glades High. The video is about a student named Curran Harris, which is a student at the school looking for a prom day. As the video went on, we can see people harshly rejecting her and laughing at her face. But when looking at the other videos, we can see more comedy skits just like this in every other video. Go as friends, that's cool too. I just, Do I look like your friend? I mean, I'm not your friend. That's Dark Daddy. Does he look like a friend to you? Kind of like I thought, a friend to you? Girl, you she must got me twisted. First she, of all, I if you want to go to prom with me. Um, <clears throat> okay. These videos called recaps were posted every other week on the school's YouTube channel. Mark Wiener appeared frequently in almost every recap. He was the director of the videos and presented an unorthodox way of comedy. His passion, charisma, and creativity all contributed to making his videos genuinely entertaining. They were something everyone could enjoy, and every video seemed distinctly different from the last. Due to his innovative and creative way of video making, today watching these videos and seeing how they compare to newer videos on the channel, it's like night and day. Create one and then give it to me. No. I hate you. I would hate my heart. Bye. I'm so sorry. You lost. How, how do you keep your body in such good shape? Wow, it's gym time, Andre. Technology has a big factor on our children's learning. As you can see back then, social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook was commonplace for teachers and students to stay connected. Teachers posted updates, upcoming tests, grades, and more. Today's apps such as Remind Me are more common ways of connecting students and notifying them of assignments. Instagram is also used to show current and upcoming events within the school. Back then they would use IMAX, but now we use laptops, which is all thanks to technology evolving in our school. New cameras, new laptops, new everything, just to make it simpler for the students and make our time worth it. Imagine you had to wait for someone else to finish with an iMac. It would be so over, counting that there's over almost 3,000 students. But at the end of the day, the reason I know all of this stuff is because of the Coral Glades YouTube channel, where I could see everything that happened actually 10 years ago. Make sure to check out the channel if your curiosity gets the best of you and you want to compare how your experience differs with other students back then. Those students have some pretty good moves. Yeah, I don't think we can top that. It might just be time to say goodbye. We'll see you all in the morning announcements. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.